So recently we had a client who was broken down the side of the road trying to get his car to start. Police stopped to help him out and he was charged with DUI. This is a wild story you are not going to want to miss. And I'm about to tell you in this video how we got that DUI dismissed. Hi, my name is Daniel M. Rosenberg. I'm a criminal defense attorney and the founding partner of Rosenberg Perry & Associates. It is also my personal goal and passion to provide information and education on the criminal justice system before people become involved and entrenched in the system. And every week we're dealing with at least one new DUI matter, and this case in particular sticks out because what it looked like at first blush to law enforcement is absolutely not what happened in reality. The story starts in the middle of the night with my client and his wife in a vehicle pulled over on the side of the road and the vehicle is inoperable. Law enforcement, under the community caretaking exception, stops to check and see what's going on. The key is in the ignition. My client is behind the wheel, indicating that he is attempting to start the vehicle. The police reports indicate that our client is visibly intoxicated, that he provides information somewhat indicating that he was operating the car, more specifically that he shouldn't have been driving the car, but he didn't know if he was driving the car. It was somewhat incoherent. When the officer checks in, they find my client in the driver's seat, with the key in the ignition and his wife in the passenger seat. The car is, again, inoperable, and when asked who's driving, our client indicated something to the effect of, I shouldn't have been driving, I don't know, I'm drunk. So there was no clear admission that he was operating the motor vehicle. They did not inquire of his wife as to whether or not she was driving. That's significant. Due to his level of intoxication, he was not able to perform standardized field sobriety tests. He was then taken to a hospital police obtained a search warrant for his blood and they drew his blood. The blood results came back showing he had a blood alcohol concentration of above a 0 0.20. The legal limit is a 0 0.08, so he was more than two times the legal limit. He was charged with DUI and retained our firm. So now that you know a little bit about the case, what is it that we did once we got the case to put him in the best position for the best possible result? Well, the first thing we did was enter our appearance and request a full and complete copy of the discovery packet. What we received was an initial discovery packet, which was missing the full and complete blood draw paperwork. It was also missing the audio recording of the telephonic search warrant. What that means is law enforcement officer, when they got a warrant that night, they used the phone, they called a judge, they told the judge what it was that they were looking for and what their probable cause was, and that judge then verbally granted the search warrant. That is a telephonic search warrant. After demanding this discovery, then we spoke to our client and found out what really happened, which was our client wasn't operating the motor vehicle, his wife was. The vehicle became inoperable. They pulled over to the side of the road. His wife then asked him to try and help start the vehicle because she could not. Based on this, we had his wife provide this information to the state and indicated if this matter was proceeding to trial, she was going to come and testify consistent with what she told us. Armed with that information, we presented our arguments to the state, which in some were, you cannot prove operation of this motor vehicle, you cannot prove the blood draw because you need to provide us with all of this discovery. The state did not provide the defense with a copy of the audio of the search warrant. Well, we as the defense have the absolute right to review that audio. And if there's a problem with that audio, we get to challenge the search warrant. And if we challenge the search warrant and win, the blood draw results do not come in. And this could be more significant than you may anticipate. Let me tell you why. We had a prior case where we were representing an individual who was charged with vehicular homicide. Two people died as a result of this motor vehicle accident. There was a telephonic search warrant where the officer was never sworn in by the Superior Court judge. As a result, that search warrant was no good. This is the type of attention to detail that can make or break a defense case. Coming back to our current case, the next argument we presented was, even if the blood draw results stay out, you cannot prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt because you cannot prove he was intoxicated. Specifically, saying he looked intoxicated is not enough. You need blood, breath, or standardized field sobriety tests. And in this case, there were no standardized field sobriety tests. Now, after some significant back and forth, multiple court appearances, ultimately, we were able to have the DUI dismissed. Our client was able to move forward without a license suspension, they could keep their job, and they don't have a DUI in their record. An excellent criminal defense attorney once said, every one of us can guarantee that we will not commit a crime, but none of us can guarantee that we will not be accused of one. And when you are, you need representation that you can count on and advice that you can trust. So if you, a friend or family member, has been charged or arrested in New Jersey, please contact our office. 
We'll take the time we need to assess your situation and give you some honest and straightforward advice. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if there's a topic you'd like to learn more about, please leave a comment below or contact our office. I'd love to hear about it. We are criminal trial attorneys. We have your back. That's what we do.